Hello. Welcome to another Tweedy Outdoors video. I'm here in Lewis for the afternoon. It's a Friday afternoon. My main reason for coming here was basically the easy availability of English sparkling in this neck of the woods. I probably complained before. Very difficult to buy that stuff in London, annoyingly. So I'm going to do a bit of a walk while I'm here, possibly up to Mount Caburn, which I think is an Iron Age hill fort and will maybe make a good location to have a glass of wine, possibly a bit of local Sussex cheese and so forth. Of course, um, before all of that, I'm stopping off to pay my respects at the Lewis Arms, one of my favourite pubs of all time. It's a sort of local away from home. Harvey's, of course, despite ignore the Fuller's logo, is Harvey's. Cheers. I've had a very delightful hour or so in Lewis. I'm now going to head up the hill. One of the wonderful things about Lewis as a town is you get to the edge of it and immediately you're in the downs. You're immediately in wonderful countryside albeit there is a bit of a steep climb. I think this road also serves as access to Lewis Golf Club. Beyond the golf club now and look, open rolling hills. I'm afraid I've had to remove my jacket. Uh, spring has finally sprung it seems. I did notice in the weather forecast today that there was a short window of actual sunny weather predicted and it looks like they were right. Afternoon ladies. have a swarm of flies following me. I don't know if they're coming out on camera. They are really loud as well. It is an Iron Age hill fort and has been excavated many times over the years, first by our friend General Pitt Rivers in the 1870s and then multiple times since then. I read somewhere that this is possibly the single most excavated site in the UK. Pitt Rivers found close to 2,000 artefacts during his excavations here and they form part of the founding collection of the Pitt Rivers Museum in Oxford. That said, as with other hill forts around the UK. Nobody can quite decide what its exact purpose was and there is the usual rumbling debate about whether it had more pragmatic applications, possibly a centre for trade, possibly defensive earthworks, versus of course some kind of ceremonial or ritual or religious significance. One thing I particularly like about this spot is that I believe if you know where to look you can get a view of one of my favourite vineyards for English sparkling wine, Breaky Bottom from here. That point there is where the railway crosses the Glind Reach, which is a tributary of the River Ouse. And I think that is also where it meets the River Ouse. And then I think from there what you need to do is sort of follow the River Ouse, but keep to the right of it. It's quite bendy there. Where it starts to get hilly again, towards the horizon, somewhere up there. That's where Breaky Bottom is. So that is a nice segue because that is the wine that I have brought along with me. Today I popped into Harvey's Brewery Wine and Beer Shop, which is actually an incredibly good wine shop, as well as, of course, being a purveyor of its own fabulous beer. As always, a good selection of local English wine, including some English sparkling, including my favourite Breaky Bottom. Just for completeness sake, this is the top of Mount Caburn. It's only 150 metres, so it's by no means the highest spot on the downs, but it is the highest spot in this little outlying crop. Tempting though the bench is, I might actually sit for a while in this little pit here. Feels like it gives me a tiny, tiny bit of shelter from the wind. A couple of local cheeses. I'm in Sussex, of course, so this is Sussex Charmer, a cheese called Seven Sisters. Don't think I've had that before, but I believe that is also from Sussex. And some Breaky Bottom. I love this stuff. This is the first time they produced a 
Blanc de Noir, a wine made purely from the Pinot Noir in the vineyard, which I think you can see somewhere off there in the distance. It's going to be tiny. I also have this ridiculously over the top ice bucket I have brought along, hoping it wouldn't leak. Did pretty well actually. My backpack stayed remarkably dry despite that being half filled with ice. Cheers. That is actually nicely chilled. I bought this in Harvey's beer and wine shop attached to Harvey's brewery. And it was just off the shelf then, so it's only really had the time that it's taken me to walk up the hill, sitting in the ice. This feels pretty nicely chilled. In case anyone wants tasting notes, I doubt anyone cares. I have done a couple of tasting videos on this over on English Sparkling with Tweedy, that singularly unsuccessful channel that no one's interested in. I know this isn't everyone's cup of tea, but that is an absolutely beautiful wine, I think. It's full of hedgerow fruits and black currant, blackberries, and it's incredibly crisp and mineral. I am doing some tasting notes. <laughs> Having said, you probably don't want to hear those. You're getting them anyway. Crisp, mineral, zingy, delightful volume, really nice mouthfeel to it. It's so full of life, joyous, really wonderful stuff. 2018, that wonderfully hot summer, it's captured in this bottle. I was there picking these grapes at Breaky Bottom over there. Not these particular grapes, different grapes from another bit of the vineyard. Cheers. We try first a bit of this Seven Sisters. <laughs> this is great content, isn't it? Cheese and wine tasting with Tweedy. I've hit a new low or a new high, I don't know. Mm. So that's a used milk cheese. I would say it's like a very soft version of Pecorino, maybe. I've had something similar in Italy. Mm. Soft, creamy, slightly nutty, rich. Let's have a go at the Sussex Charmer. I promise none of this is sponsored. I just bought some cheese. I just like the idea of having Sussex cheese with Sussex wine here in Sussex. I love Sussex. I know this has probably come up before. I don't actually, I don't come from Sussex. It's a place I discovered in later life because of the South Downs mainly, and then the wine. And I think it is an absolutely beautiful part of the world. Sussex Charmer is a sort of cheddar and Parmesan style hybrid. Mmm. So it's like a cheddar, but with a little bit more, possibly a bit more sweetness, a little bit more umami, a bit more intensity. That's really good. Very happy with my pair of cheeses. <laughs> this is terrible content. <laughs> Who cares about me eating cheese on a hill? Oh, the, um, the bread was baked locally as well, by the way. Clouding over a little bit now. Train going past. Is that Glind over there? As in Glindborn. It's 6.30 now, still a good hour and a bit to go until sunset, but it seems to have completely clouded over. I don't think there is going to be much of a sunset to speak of. Sadly, the weather forecast sort of teased that there might be a bit of a, a window extending that far of relatively sunny weather, but anyway, the wine is fantastic. I'm enjoying the location, despite the, the, the sort of distant din of the cars below me. I think it is time to head on. It is starting to get a bit chilly now and um, the, I don't think there's much of a prospect of a sunset. So time to head back to Lewis, I think. Heading out through the ditch, much, uh, much more pronounced on this side than it was on the side where I was sitting. Despite its prickliness, I'm quite a fan of gorse. Flowers all year round. I think I've said that a few times before, but uh, on grim winter days when there is nothing but gray and brown, there is some beautiful yellow from gorse flowers quite often. I have that cloud of flies above me again. I don't know if you can, are they coming out? You probably can't see them on camera. They're too small, aren't they? Well, apart from the intermittent clouds of flies, and there's some more here, slightly sad to leave this. This bit of greenery, these hills just outside of Lewis, that's been very nice. Evening, ladies. It's about five minutes now before the official moment of sunset. It, it would be happening over there if there were anything to see. Heading down that road that leads to the golf course, just past the golf course, back down into Lewis. It's quite dramatic from this angle. So I hop up on here and get a sense of that. I think we saw some of these shots early, didn't we? But uh, 
this is quite high up. This is the part of Lewis they call Cliff, where there was a tragic avalanche. Was that 19th century? I forget the timing of that now, and that's the rationale for the Snowdrop Inn being so named. Completely unnecessary. I think I ate my own body weight in cheese earlier, but uh, I walked past this, uh, this South Street fish bar. I remember this from Lewis Bonfire last year and couldn't resist it. The smell was wafting even 50 yards away. So I've got some chips. I'll probably only eat a few. Okay, well that's it for this video at this wonky angle twixt these two cans of Harvey's Sussex Best from the platform more or less at Lewis Station. Bit of a funny video, I think, but uh, hopefully there was some vague entertainment value in it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.